Welcome, welcome to the 2019 Suburban East Conference Music Festival. Just so you know, we will be starting each of the morning performances five minutes after the, the scheduled performance. So this is starting at 11.20. Um, please remember that audience members must stay in their seats until after the clinician has finished working with the performing ensemble. We also remind you to remain quiet and refrain from using electronic devices and flash photography during the session. Our clinician this year is Dr. Jonathan Tallberg, Director of Choral, Vocal, and Opera Studies at the Bob Cole Conservatory at California State University, Long Beach. Please welcome the East Ridge High School, Bel Canto, under the direction of Elizabeth Gullick. in the program, so we're starting right with Tres Cantos.
Faccio fare Giosi, io me ne recca poi a Giosi.
you out of taste since we have our engine room here. Okay. Uh, wonderful work, choir. Really great fun. Do you like these two pieces? Yes. Yeah. And, and the faces that you're showing me right now is what I want to see in Gaudete. <laughs> and what, what I mean by what is Gaudete actually? Oh. It means rejoice, right? Let's try something first of all. Will you use all of the risers? Spread out. It's going to feel really weird to you for a second, but then you're going to get used to it. So try and diffuse, isn't that the right term of the logic? Is that kind of chemistry? Use some diffusion here. Awesome. Feel like you can breathe a little bit now? I don't believe that you can sing a piece like this this way, right? You have to be free to do it. I'm going to actually have you conduct, because they're used to watching, but I'm going to give some ideas. Right at the beginning, tenors, um, can we just let this be a little bit more distant, a little further away? Still supported, still musical, but a little, just a, a touch softer. Because we have such a long way to go on this piece. I think we can play with some different dynamics. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. So let's start just a little bit softer at the beginning of and, and, and there it goes. <coughs> See a chart there? Yes. You gotta trust your brother to step there. Everybody's singing it. Everybody's singing it. Mm -hmm. You got more together. Why? Because they have to listen. Exactly. So I think we're working too hard. Conductors always work too hard. Let them do that just really, really gently. Henry, that was beautiful. Now we're ready. We're now ready to rock and roll. We've set it up really, really gently. Now, once I would say, you guys, who's in charge here of the four of you? <laughs> You? Okay. Then. Uh, um, the thing about being a percussionist is, you know, percussionists are the greatest team players. Percussionists, drummers are the greatest team players in instrumental music, right? You guys have to work together. You set up your machines together. You know, there's so much lugging and helping each other. There really is a brotherhood, sisterhood of drummers. But on the stage, when you're in a rhythmic position, someone has to be in charge. Would you agree with that? So my question to you guys is, who are you listening? It has to be you. That's right. The bass, the bass drum has to lead it. And choir, that's true for us too. You were pulling yourselves away. You were rushing him once, once the rhythm started. So we have to, we, what is your name? Uh, Noah. Noah. So we have to listen to Noah, okay? Um, yeah, everybody should listen to Noah. Got it? What's a good place to start with? with let's actually start right here. With that. But do we get our two minutes? No. Okay, perfect. No, let's, let's just do this. Yeah, let's, do, yeah, let's just work on this. Unless you want me to do the other one. Okay, great. So, my, my take for the other one, um, so here, here's my thought. So, Noah, when you do this again, are you, is this the last time forever? Did you do it for Christmas? And then, yeah. Okay, got it. So, this one's new. A couple of things on this. First of all, I love it. I want to see how it feels with you guys spread out like this. Because I just feel like you were too tight, right? You can't breathe, you can't dance, you can't move. The other thing is, I think the rainstorm goes on too long. I like it, but it's longer than the piece. It's longer, no, really, it's longer than the piece. So I think it's great. It's fat. In fact, it's wonderful. But, um, if you ever watch the Eric Whitaker version of Cloudburst um, on, on his TED Talk, that's my choir. I love rainstorms. I love rainstorms. They're super fun to make happen. So really just cut it in half. I think it's just, you know, perfect. Now let, let's go right where everybody comes in. This can be louder and brighter, basses and tenors. You don't get that very often. Ha! Say ha! Yeah. Say that. Yeah. that. I need more of that in the sound. 
We're gonna start. We're gonna start right, and I'll let you conduct this. We're gonna start right there. Okay. One minute. Okay. Okay. I. They said that we're done by time. That's the idea. No vibrato. No vibrato in this at all. It's got to be super straight though. Just try one. And then we're done. Go. Make that sound. Play with those overtones. I know. Just find the overtones. Good work. Great work. Thanks. It's good to hear you guys. Good job. Thank you, everyone. Welcome to the 2019 Suburban East Conference Music Festival. Please remember the audience members must stay in their seats until after the clinician has finished working with the performing ensemble. We also remind you to remain quiet and refrain from using electronic devices and flash photography during the session. Our clinician this year is Dr. Kirk D. Moss, who serves as professor and chair of the Department of Music and Theater at the University of Northwestern St. Paul. Please welcome the East Ridge High School Symphony Orchestra under the direction of Kelly D. Moret.
Thank you. Really exciting to hear. Uh, so if uh, earlier today we heard Beethoven's fifth symphony movement is uh, probably the number one symphony movement heard in the world, this might be number two um, uh, in, in all the Western orchestral repertoire. So great that you can experience this in such an exciting movement. Um, so just a, a couple quick thoughts. You've got a, lo a lot of uh, really good things going on. Um, could we, do you have measure numbers in your parts or not? Just curious. In terms, uh, this is pretty close to being strings. Go like, count like in like 10 measures, uh, string section. Uh, I think that's about right, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Where the quarter notes start and then you've got some rests, yes? Right? Um, could we make sure, let's, let's just play that right now. Can you make sure to set the bow at the bottom, at the frog? and then release, and there's lots of things we've been working on. Uh, it, those of you in the honor orchestra with the Borodine, it's very similar to this, um, but common, we get stuck a little in the middle, and we're trying to articulate things at, from the middle while others are at the frog. If we can all go at the frog, that'll really help. Start right there, like measure 10, just strings for a moment here. And uh, two, 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 frog. Good. Now, now, the other thing to be aware of is I, as a, as a principle for me, and everybody can, does things differently, if there's three notes and we're in an orchestra, I recommend you play two and divide up because you're partners. So if we're seeing this motion in an orchestra that's less common, unless it's a very intentional effect that we want to achieve. So I would say go for two, make sure it's not a fifth that you're playing so it can be totally solid in terms of the pitch and really beautiful with the left hand going and then just go ahead. So some little little things with chords. Um, uh, rhythmically winds, um, we have lots of places, and strings too, but mostly a lot of winds. Um, dotted eight sixteenths in here can get kind of triplety and, and I can't like dive in here in a minute and, and, and find all the places. But be super careful. As a concept, I recommend you almost think every dotted 8 16th, almost think of it like it's double dotted, just to kind of err on the side so it's not like the triplets. Because what he puts here is is like triplets and then dotted 8 16ths. So what sometimes happens in a performance is the longer we go, the more they all start sounding the same. The more you can make them sound different, the more accurate it is to what Dvorak intended. And also it's more interesting variety wise to the audience. So just be be super duper aware uh, of the dotted 8 16ths. Um, and then uh, as, as you just finish up um, with, with all this excitement, um, you know, just keep thinking to the middle so everything just kind of blends. Hey, let's just play the end one more time because we only have like a minute and I'm not going to be able to tell you anything in that anyway. And you need to play the end because it's so fun. Uh, where do you want to start? Like, uh, do you have a place you usually start for this ending? Help me out here. Like, like in tempo or where? Uh, uh, just pretty close to the end because we only have a minute. Uh, or maybe Mayno. How about the Mayno? Yeah, everybody know where that is? Yes, yes. Here it is. And just so you can play again. And we, we breathe this first entrance in so it's a release. Warm sounds. Think into the middle. Aaron. Now keep the vibrato going. Keep the vibrato going. And then fight like crazy on the end. So the longer you play, the more in tuner it gets. With the timpani mallets, I forgot to, uh, great to have a couple sets of mallets for this. We're using the same set through the whole time. Yep, that's, I, that's, I know because I like heard. So like on the rolls, go super fluffy, you know, cotton balls. But then on the other articulate, more of like a, a ultra staccato. Because what you want to do is you want to add to the double bass sound. And I'm fine. I think the positioning is great. It's fine having you a, a, a part that's cool. But uh, a little bit more so that articulation feels more like a double bass. 
and then when you're rolling, you can roll. So, hey, really fun to hear, very exciting. So glad you could play this repertoire, congratulations.
Congratulations. Very good. Thank you for being so well prepared and for uh, taking uh, Brian's piece and giving it such a great effort. I'm not hearing wrong notes. I'm not hearing wrong rhythms or anything like that. There are some things that I'd like to share with you in just a, a little bit of time that I've got going on here. Um, I think the most challenging section is 189, third movement, fast swing. I was hearing a mishmash of styles here. And so, uh, um, how are you interpreting this? I mean, I, I think, you know, if, if you've got four sixteenths in a fast swing, how are they supposed to play that? <laughs> yeah, you know, and so, so if it's you know, so, so rather than da 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 you know, just being square with it. Try to have a little bit more fun with it. Can we take it, please, at 189? I know I'll be a little bit different than what you have going on here. I don't know this piece. So, about right there, a one, ready. <laughs> Am I off your tempo? Or is That's just a little, little odd, yeah. Okay. One, two, three, about right there. Try it again. A one, ready, go. <clears throat> yeah. So the first thing that's going to help you right now is everybody who's got the forte piano to come down farther so that the act of stuff that's saying, now we're swinging, comes through. Right now we're hearing, what? <laughs> that doesn't tell us anything. Make sense? A one, two, ready, go. <clears throat> There you go. Stop. recording that you can go by to find out what his yeah, intention is here it seems as though the swing is back there and this isn't is that the way you're going at it yes. yeah okay that that makes more sense mm -hmm. so uh, th those of you who have the, the stuff in the, about the sixth bar and so on in the woodlands uh, uh, aim for the, the the landing points with those licks and so on that might help you keep those moving in through there I only have such a short amount of time, I don't want to get belabored with that. The real uh, uh, high point of the piece for me was the second movement. 
you guys found the heart of that expression and really took it in. It was meaningful, it was sensitive, it made great sense, and, and I applaud you on that. Um, as, as we get to the end of this last movement, 217 out, here I would, or, no, pardon me, that's not the one, uh, when it comes back in, at 249 and out, just finding out where, it sort of was all the same as you were going through. Are there certain chords that are the landing chords? Where, where is the progression going to? Uh, within each phrase, how, how are we going to move through time? Does that make sense to you? Right now it's like, oh, we're just negotiating the, the rhythms and trying not to fall apart. And there's something deeper in that yet, probably. The uh, uh, trick with this kind of stuff in this kind of space is to separate anything that's syncopated. And what I was hearing was, dee, da, da, da. And I don't know if that's the, the, the style, but dee, ah, uh, mm, mm. You know, if you give just a little bit of punch, a little bit of separation for a fusion movement like this, I think that's going to help you uh, stay on top of the pulse. But it's sort of dee, bong, bong, bong. Which one of those four notes should we be aiming for? You know, dee, bong, mm, mm. Does that make sense to you? You know, we, we're just sort of coming together uh, collectively on how we're going to interpret the phrasing through all of that stuff, 274 and so on. Um, in the, in the uh, first movement, uh, the, here I would encourage you just to, I, I see him conducting it lightly, and I would encourage you to, to go after that light character as well. You know, so that, that sort of compound time rolling out kind of feel can be sort of an effortless kind of sound. Make sense? I wish I had more time to work with you. You're a very fine ensemble. I've known him since he was about six months older than some of you are right now. I'm very proud of him. Yep, congratulations. <laughs>